Oh no. <laughs> Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. So I realized something the other day. I am a professional artist. And as a professional artist, I am always expected to continue to innovate and uh, make new stuff. But I'm bored. And so I decided to make my own paint out of some Coke. And in the process, I may have put myself on several lists sent out by the NSA. And also, accidentally blew up my kitchen. Or at least came close! And so kids, here is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make your powdered Coke more easily usable. And uh, I mean paint, paint, paint. I meant paint, though. All you art people, art enthusiasts, and coke whores, come along with me. Ugh. This garage sale coke is so bad. Okay. <laughs> okay, so starting out this project, you'll just need a few things. To start, you'll need coke, you'll need some sort of pot, and some more coke. Yeah, we, we're gonna boil a lot of coke today, folks. For anyone who's actually trying this, I don't know why you would. Uh, finagle around, put it on medium-low, because that's what you think you're gonna do, but later you're just gonna switch it to high anyway because you have no patience, but, you know, for right now, keep it on medium-low. Add your coke in, add more coke in. So much coke. Put all of the coke into the pot. Every, every coke in the pot. All right, now all you have to do is wait for your Coke to heat up and slowly reduce. Once it gets pretty warm, you could decide, like me, to pour yourself a glass of warm Coke, thinking it might taste good. It won't. You'll put it back and decide to just add it into the pot because we're going to use up so much Coke in this video anyway that it just isn't going to matter. You're then going to wait an inordinate amount of time, letting that Coke boil. I'm not going to tell you how long until it starts to reduce into a thick, syrupy goodness. In the meantime, we are going to get started on a delicious little project that I end up not even using. Well, we're going to make a paint can out of this Coke, and as you can see, also get it all over my kitchen in the process. Next, make sure to remove the Coke's skin thoroughly. Next, you're just going to make sure that's all dried off. You're going to leave it to tan and turn into Coke leather. You're then going to use a pair of scissors to absolutely mutilate a tube of your favorite paint and get it absolutely everywhere. Time to cut the Coke leather again. At this point, you're going to take the piece of Coke leather and wrap it around the disembodied head of your paint tube. Then you're going to take some Gorilla Glue and it's not going to work, even though you try really hard. And so, you're just going to eventually give up. But don't worry, we'll hot glue that later. In the meantime, let's check in. Oh look, bubbles. Now that we have our deliciously carcinogenic tar, we are going to pour it into this tiny maple syrup bottle that your brother-in-law got you from the Dollar Tree. Don't worry though, we're gonna spill all over. You're then going to congratulate yourself on what a great job you did. Wow. You may be wondering why we're still boiling some of our tar. All you'll need, some very large, horrible cupcake holders, a sieve, and a scale. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We have a couple of solutions that I'm gonna mix up really fast. And then once I do that, I'm gonna figure out basically how to infuse it with Coca-Cola. There's a little bit of an odd process, but once again, I will let Voiceover Becca handled that part. I'm really not sure what voiceover Becca was supposed to be saying here, but you're just going to boil some water and then you're going to proceed to very carefully weigh out and add very specific quantities of some carcinogenic substances that for some reason are also made by McCormick. Well, 
I'm glad they make them. Someone has to. You're then going to combine these hazardous substances, aka alum powder, with the very warm water in specific quantities, which I will not tell you, but I'll link in the description. Once you have your alum all measured out, carefully add in tablespoons of boiling water until you decide to get frustrated and bored with that and decide to switch to a rice scoop. So keep adding water until you're at the right proportion and then move it and mix it with a little fork just like this. It's at this point in time where we're going to add a bunch of our non-tarified Coca-Cola into a beautiful peanut butter jar that I have laying around my kitchen. You may ask, but whatever happened to the tar? Do not worry, that may or may not be explained. Add those together and then give it a nice little stir and you are ready for the next process that definitely is not going to be carcinogenic or potentially hazardous at all. Next, add some washing soda, which is kind of like Coke's much cleaner cousin, and you'll proceed to add that to a Pyrex completely out of the shot. Next, you'll just continue using your ghetto rice scoop to ladle hot water. Then mix. Here's the fun part. Hypothetically, We'll see if everything explodes. Okay, here we go. Carefully stir the washing soda and the alum solution together, and don't be surprised if it foams up quite a bit. So you will actually need to have a pretty big jar for this part. Serious voiceover coming in for just a second here. Also, please remember, I'm not wearing gloves, but if you're making these materials, you probably should have some sort of protection or gloves on because some of these materials are quite hazardous. Wait. Okay, so you got your jar. Okay, so you got your your filter thing. So this is what we're gonna need for our dye stuff for the filtration. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this coffee filter and you're gonna put it into your little funnel. like so, and then you're just gonna pop it into your little jar. Isn't that so nice? It's like it's got a little hat. Okay, so there is actually two, two different ways to do this. As far as adding the little solution, which we've already done to this lovely jar, we're also gonna do it one different way to see if it works better. Spoiler alert, I'm not even going to tell you the different way that I did because guess what? It didn't work better, so there. But anyway, here's the process. Once you have those both poured, all you need to do is just let them sit for an outrageously long time, continuing to add more water into the coffee filters once they drain a bit until the water comes out completely clear. Okay, so we've let them sit for about an hour and a half, and it looks like most of the liquid has drained out into the bottom. And so I'm just going to go ahead and take these, and I'm going to put them outside in the sun so that they can dry off a little bit. Once your pigments are completely dry, it's almost time for some ASMR mortar and pestle time. Pestle? 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 It's bowl crushing time, baby. The important thing to remember is that we want to get the particulates as fine as physically possible before we go in with the glass bowler in the next step. Okay, also a crazy aside for a second, I actually tried for like five minutes to just experiment with heating up the syrup with the linseed oil itself. And then I did a little Google search and well, turns out that, uh, Linseed oil is highly explosive and definitely not recommended to be heated 
even at all. So I definitely uh, could have died today. Glad I did that little Google search. At this next point, if you go to any source that seems reputable about grinding paint, they're going to tell you that you need to take two teaspoons to one drop of linseed oil and then make that into a fine paste. This will not work at all. And you'll continue to add more and more until eventually you just add a whole dang syringe full. And that seems to work pretty well. After this, you simply make it into a fine paste like you were actually intending to. Then you're just going to use the glass muller to work that pigment in a figure eight shape. That's right, work it, baby. The real trick here is to try and get it to the consistency of oil paint. If you don't know what the consistency of oil paint is, I can't help you. All right, at this point, we're just going to repeat that same step with our other pigment that we have that is just a little bit darker of a pigment because it was made with the reduced coke rather than the straight coke right out of the bottle. And now all we need to do is paint. All of the brown paint that you see in this video is actually just the paint that I've created out of Coke. So that is 100% uh, Coke paint. By the way, side note, if you look up how to dry Coke, um, don't. It's a horrible idea and it will probably get you flagged by the NSA. Now that we have our beautiful paint, it's time to test our patience because holy cow, this paint took forever to dry. When I tell you, spoiler alert, I had to do like five different coats of paint with this paint. It just, it took forever to dry. If I had any recommendation for any of you guys who want to potentially make your own paint, my advice would be to add some sort of drying agent, such as a cobalt dryer or, or something like that, because that's definitely going to speed up the drying process of the paint and just make it look a lot nicer. Although you do need to be warned that cobalt dryer is not only a very useful tool, but also extraordinarily toxic. So once again, I've said this earlier, but please don't handle any of the materials used for making paint without supervision and or gloves, please. It's reflection time, boys. So did it work though? Here's a haiku for you. It kinda sorta worked in a way that sorta worked, but also no. So, <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> so here's what we learned. Does it work very well? as a watercolor or as an ink yes absolutely it, <laughs> it works very well but but does it work as an oil paint does it it does it actually work though um sort of it, it works okay I would say that the most frustrating thing about working with it was that you had to get like four or five layers to get a full opacity. And I just didn't feel like that's worth it for me when you can get a lot of really similar colors. For instance, if you mixed burnt sienna with like a raw umber or like a different 
darker shade of brown. I don't know. For me, it was a really cool experiment. I haven't tasted it yet, you know, because poison. But I will say this. It's not over yet, baby. We're going to do more. So let me know in the comments, what soda should we try and make into a paint next? Or plant. Or Oreo cookie. But not cats. No, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we need to do damage control now. <laughs> I just spilled it again. I need to drink some of this nasty garage sale coke. Just like we're making some delicious pasta, mamma mia.